This video is going to continue in our series on named distributions. So we're going to look at the uniform distribution, but we should probably be a little bit more specific in that this is the uniform distribution over finite sets. Now, I'm going to give this a more formal name later on, but for now, we'll just trust that uh, there's another kind of uniform distribution over infinite sets. And this one's just over finite sets. So we'll start out the video with a quick example. You all know an example of the uniform distribution uh, already. I'll start there. Then we will talk about the density function. Uh, we'll write out mathematically what this function looks like because it's not terribly complicated. We'll plot the density function in R, and then we'll um, generate some fake data to show you kind of some intuition behind the distribution. Here we go. A quick example. A fair die, that is a, the singular of dice, just one six-sided cube. Where the word fair is to mean the probability of any of these six sides is the same. So there is probability one-sixth of rolling any one side. That is like rolling the die and seeing any one side face up. So the quick example is a six-sided die. The um, sample space for this die is just the set of integers, one through six, and any one of those values sees probability one sixth because they're all the same. We describe this as a uniform distribution over the set of integers one to six. So let's start the density function discussion Um, with the example, from the example, let's just do it like this, example, uh, where s is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The density function in this case looks like uh, we call all our density functions f because statisticians have a terrible notation. It is a function based on the argument x and depends on the two numbers 1 and 6. As um, is the, as is common for the density function of the uniform distribution, you always specify the endpoints of your set of integers. And then it looks like, whoops, sorry, 6 minus 1 plus 1. It's a little odd to do this minus 1 plus 1 business, but as you saw, I started writing out the general case for the density function, and it will become a little bit more obvious why we do it there. So the density function ends up just being 1, 6. The takeaway is, for this set, we get out what we intuitively want to be the equal probabilities amongst all the elements of the set, even if we have to do this funny add 0 business here. So for that simple example, it works out great. In general, we write out the density function still calling it f, dependent on two values, a and b. And those are essentially the endpoints of the set of integers that you are trying to assign uniform density to. So in this case, the density looks like b minus a plus 1. Essentially, all you are doing is trying to count the number of elements in your set. And it turns out this is the general notation we use, even if your set might consist of non-integer-like things. So let's say you have blue, green, and yellow, just because we need an example. All you'd really do is map these words to integers and then define A to be 
1 and b to be 3. And then it would work out in this example because your density function, you'd theoretically with only three elements, want there to be a one-third probability of any of them. And I hope you see that that is indeed what you'd get. So this is the general formula for the density function of this uniform distribution over finite sets. And we don't care what kind of elements your set has. You'll just assign them integers and go from there. So next, we're going to look at trying to plot this distribution in R. So here I am in a class, uh, fresh version of R. And we're going to essentially Let's just stick with the example we saw before. Um, pick values for A and B. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways to plot this density function. One, using the function curve in R, as we have done for all other density functions, except there's going to be a catch here in the world of curve for the uniform distribution. Notice that x doesn't show up in the density function anywhere for the uniform density, for the uniform distribution's density function. But for the function curve in R, there needs to be an expression with x in it. So I'm just going to add 0 divided by x just to satisfy R, um, such that this function curve will work out. That's really kind of annoying. So I'm going to show us another way to make this plot in case you are too annoyed by this outcome. We want points because we're working over a finite set, and I like to declare the point character type to be 20. So if we go to the top, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hold Command. If you're on a Windows, hold Control, and I'm just going to hit Enter three times. And there we have it, the density function over a fair die with all the same uh, density values. That is, we believe the uniform density function should give us the same density for each value in the set. And that's what we see there. So plotting this wasn't so bad. We could do it without curve pretty similarly. We go plot on the x-axis. We want the values from A to B. On the y-axis, we want to essentially say 1 over B minus A plus 1. And we want to do that b minus a plus 1 times. And the rest of this will look pretty much the same. Now, the only thing I'm going to change here, and it doesn't matter if you add this y lim argument to the function plot or the function curve, I'm going to change the y axis to start at 0 and go up to 0.5, just so our next step in the fake data simulation will be a little bit more clear. So here we go. Um, let's go up here just to try to make things a little bit cleaner as we go. To generate fake data from the uniform distribution over a set index from 1 to 6, we'll go like this. We'll use the function named sample. We want to sample from elements of the vector consisting of the integers from A to B. We want to sample oh, some number of times. Let's just say 30. Remember, that's our sample size. And we're going to say replace equals true. That's essentially like if you roll the die and you observe a 1, you're not taking that 1 off of the face of the die. The 1 stays there. So it's as if you're replacing that 1 back into the set of values you could observe. Uh, otherwise, if you had replace equals false, if you observed the 1, you'd essentially take that out, and you could only roll 2 through 6 from then on. We'll say more about sampling with and without replacement later on in the course. For now, the die does not change every time you roll it. So you will replace any value you observed back into the set, even if you observed it. And I see there, that's the error message you'll get if you don't declare n to be a value. There, we did it. Roll the die, x, capital N, times. And there you have it. That is rolling a fair die 
capital N times on a computer. As silly as a task as that seems, it turns out to be an incredibly helpful um, skill to have, uh, to know how to do. So with our fake data, we can estimate how the proportion of values that are equal to six using code like this. Now remember, that's essentially asking which of the elements of X are equal to six. Trues and falses on most programming languages are equal to ones and zero. True is one, false is zero. So you could add that up. And then you could divide that by how many observations you have in the sample. And in fact, the function mean does exactly that for us. Now, if we wanted to get a little crazy here, let's add in some challenge code for us. I'm going to show us now how we can estimate the proportion of data in the vector x that are equal to all the values that x might take on. So I'm going to put those little orange circles on this plot like we've seen before, where I'm estimating the density function at particular values on the x-axis. So I'm going to create a vector that looks a little bit different than it did from previous code. Hopefully, you all can run that line of code to see what it does for you. The rest of this is going to look pretty similar to before. Prop.table called on table is essentially going to estimate all of these probabilities that we saw before. There's the one we calculated ourselves. So if you just change the 6 to a 2, you'll get this number out from the mean of x equals equals 2. That's all prop.table called on table is doing for us. This one is I'm essentially finding the indices of temp that correspond to the indices of f hat. So I'm matching whoops, which names of temp are equal to the names of f hat. When the names of temp match the names of f hat, it returns the appropriate index. We can use that to index f hat and store into it the values of temp. Here's our plot from before. So we will now add to that the points from A to B, f, whoops, f hat, and we'll color them orange. That worked out well, even if this code is going to take you probably 10 to 15 minutes to sort through in your head. So here is our entire page of code from this example. I encourage you to change the sample size and figure out what happens to these orange dots relative to the black ones, remembering that the black ones are the true density function. Increase the sample size and figure out what happens to these orange dots relative to the black ones, where the black ones are in some sense the truth, the fixed values. You could also change A or change B this mess of code right here allows you to change A to be negative numbers, and everything should still work out. Uh, okay, so this was our introduction to the uniform distribution. Uh, remember, this is only for the uniform distribution over finite sets. Uh, and then we explored code on how to plot the density function for this uniform distribution. And we had some challenge code here so that you could see what happens with a small set of data?